QuickBooks Pro Plus Desktop 2022 Bank Reconciliation Month 1 Overview. Get ready because we bookkeeping pros are moving up the hilltop with QuickBooks Pro Plus Desktop 2022. Here we are in our Get Great Guitars practice file going through the setup process with the view drop down the open windows on the left hand side. Company drop down home page in the middle maximizing to the gray area. Reports drop down. Company and financial taking a look at that balance sheet standard. Customizing the report with a range change just for the first month of this time from 010122 to 013122. Fonts and numbers making that fonts to a change of 14. Okay, yes please and okay. We're going to stop here at this point because we're focused in on the bank reconciliation. Focused therefore on the cash amount as of the end of the first month of operations, which is for us January 31st. Comparing that then to the bank statement, remembering that we have entered transactions through the system. If we go to the home page on the left hand side, normally with most transactions with the use of forms, and many of these forms will be impacting then the checking account as we go. Therefore, the reconciliation process helping us to reconcile as we have done our data input. This being the normal process for most type of companies, even if you use bank feeds, as we saw in the past. The bank feeds, therefore, or then, can then be used to help to kind of reconcile, match up the, the information, but it's still going to be a useful tool to do the bank reconciliation. And we'll talk about the bank reconciliation here and the process of it or how to get into the bank reconciliation. We're we'll going to go to the banking drop down. We're going to go to the reconcile on down below, banking and reconcile. This is one way to get there. And then you've got your intro information for the bank reconciliation. So we got the checking account. We got the statement date. Now this will typically be populating automatically. But for us, uh, because it's the first month right now, and you have some specific difficulties with the first month. So for us, it's going to be 013122 uh, that we're going to put in place. Also, we have the 25000 that we put in as of the beginning balance. Note that that is often a problem as well because it may not match out on the first bank reconciliation to your bank reconciliation, meaning I have 30000 over here as opposed to 25000 when I look at the, the beginning balance. The reason we put 25000 into the beginning balance is because that's what was on our balance sheet that we needed to put in in order to reconcile to the balance sheet that we had in our prior bookkeeping system. So in other words, for example, if I close this back out for a second here, go to the lists drop down chart of accounts. This is a common beginning or month one transaction kind of problem with the bank reconciliation. Month one often being the most difficult bank reconciliation because of these first month kind of problems. After you get through that, then the second bank reconciliation will be much easier. We'll do an example of that, which should be more the norm. If I go to the checking account and I say rise up down below, and edit that account you'll recall that we entered an opening balance into the checking account here that opening balance we put in place because that is what was on our prior year bookkeeping system but the prior year bookkeeping system that i needed to put in place to be in balance doesn't match what's on the bank statement why wouldn't it match what's on the bank statement possibly because we had outstanding checks and deposits from the prior system, the prior accounting system. So that's one problem that you might see with the bank reconciliation. You also might not have entered a beginning balance in the bank reconciliation. And that's not a big problem either because we'll, we'll see how we can adjust that beginning balance. So if your beginning balance is off on the first bank reconciliation, closing this out, that's kind of common. And there's a way that we can kind of fix that. What we're going to do is say, I'm going to fix it as of this point in time. And then we're going to make it correct. And then going forward from here, it'll be correct in a similar fashion as we saw with the beginning balances themselves saying, I'm going to make the beginning balances correct as of, in our case, the start of the year. Anything prior to that point is in the prior accounting system. And I'm not going to worry about anything prior to that in our books. Anything going forward is going to be used in these books. Then I'm going, to, I'm going to change this again. This is going to be 013122. So then the ending balance is going to be coming from the bank statement. So in our case, I'm going to use our mock statement here, the 66241.85. So 66241.85 ending balance. Then we have down here the service charges and the interest earned. 
these are items that we could these are items that are commonly on the bank statement because and they they're not on our books so we could make an adjustment for them at this point in time in other words it's quite common that the bank charges us service charges of some kind we wouldn't have known about them we wouldn't have entered them on our side because we didn't know about them and they just charged us and took it directly out of our checking account interest earned also something that we didn't know about they just gave us the interest that we're going to earn we couldn't record it on our side until they told us about it and so we don't know about it until we get the bank statement so we could then assign those to say a bank service expense for example and interest earned income expense or income interest income over here but i don't like doing that personally because i would like to actually do the transaction myself because i think it can complicate the bank reconciliation process so I'm not going to record anything in those items here, not because we don't have those items, but because I think it's easier to enter them into the system ourselves for the reconciliation. So I'm going to continue with the reconciliation. Now, this is what the reconciliating process looks like. This is not the reconciliation. This is reconciliating the process. The end result will be then that bank reconciliation statement, for example, that we looked at in a prior presentation. And we'll see that after we enter all the data here. Note that if you are using bank feeds, then some of these items might be already kind of checked off for you because as you enter the bank feeds, even if you're using the bank feeds as a double check of what you are entering into the system, when you match out the bank feeds to what you have in the books, then when you reconcile, it'll kind of check off for you. So the bank feeds in that way can help you a little bit to make the, the process a little bit easier. We'll talk more about bank feeds at a future at a future point but notice it doesn't eliminate the need for a reconciliation process and you may still have issues with it if not everything has been matched up with the bank feeds and also you could have your system set up directly from the banks meaning you constructed your books from the bank then it would then all of these items would automatically all be checked off because you won't have any timing differences because your whole books have been constructed from the bank so in that case, you still do the bank reconciliation, but it'll be really easy. There won't be any differences if you've done everything correctly, but you still want to reconcile to make sure that you don't have doubles, duplicate information that has been entered twice or something like that. So it's still a necessary thing to do the bank reconciliation. So in any case, now we're going to be looking here. The basic layout of this thing is we got the checks on the left-hand side. So these are the decreases to the account and then the deposits are going to be on the right hand side the increases we can hide transactions after the statement date meaning you'll see down here we got transactions after uh, march or february and we're only looking at january transactions because we're looking at the january bank statement so i could hide the transactions here that should make it easier for me to reconcile note it's useful to reconcile every month but sometimes you might be in a situation where you're reconciling multiple months or you haven't reconciled for a while. So hiding the transactions after that date of the reconciliation is useful because note that if you have entered the transaction on your side, then you should have entered the transaction you know, before the bank, the bank has received the transaction. The transactions on the bank will be as of the same date or later, given the fact that the bank has lagging information you have the information first the bank has information later so all the things that cleared the bank will be on the same or later date as they clear the bank you can mark all of them here so if you were doing just basically a really easy bank reconciliation possibly you you created your books from the bank feeds you could just go in here you can mark all of them off and then if everything was correct down here you'd have a zero at the bottom which would mean that you had then reconciled but most of the time you're going to have to take and tie them off it's a tedious process but not too bad and then you can then go to the balances down below here's our reconciliation kind of balances so the beginning balance is the twenty-five thousand. that's what would be on our bank statement here but because it's our beginning balance we have to we have to deal with that difference and we'll deal with that uh in a second in the in, when we get to our next section Items you have marked as cleared. So these are going to be the, what we have then checked off thus far. So I'm going to say, well, what if I check off like that number? There's the 6892. And then if I check off this number, there's the deposit that has, has been in place. If I uncheck those and go back onto this side, you've got the, the ending balance. The ending balance is from the bank reconciliate or the bank statement. 
here, not our books, but the bank statement, and then the cleared balance starting at our beginning balance here. And so those two things, basically, we need to have them reconciled. So in other words, if I have the same beginning balance, which I don't at this time, but if I had the same beginning balance, and then I checked off exactly in our books what is also on the bank statement, then it has to reconcile. I should come out to exactly zero on down below. So when this bottom number gets to be zero, that means I have done the process of reconciling. I can then reconcile and that will generate the bank reconciliation, which will show all the items that I haven't checked off, which will be the items that will result in the reconciling items, outstanding checks, outstanding deposits. So that's going to be the general idea. I'm going to close these out and then go back to the bank statement. So if we look at the bank statement, this is a statement you would typically get, of course, from the bank, usually on a monthly basis. Now, another common issue is people often say, well, I have bank fee. I, can, I got online banking. I can just go into online banking and I can check my transaction or I can check my account balance at any given time. You can do that, but it's a little bit more difficult. It's more difficult generally to try to reconcile a running balance. So in other words, you're, it's useful to reconcile on a monthly basis because you have a cut time frame. When they give you the bank statement, you've got the beginning balance, which will be the ending balance of the prior period, which is now the beginning balance. If you try to reconcile just randomly with a, with a list of transactions, it could be a little bit difficult to see where the time frames are cut off. So even if you've got a running balance, you really kind of would like to get generally the bank, rec the bank statements, which are probably still on the online banking. You just need to download, of course, the bank statements, which will give you those intervals of a month by month interval. The bank statement will generally have the prior year balance and then it will have the additions and the transact or the, the minuses, the additions and the subtractions of the checking account, which will give you the ending balance in summary. And then you've got the detail, which will give you the deposits, which are going to be the increases and then the checks and so on and other kind of transfers or wire transfers or so on, which will be the decreases. And then that'll give us the detail to get to the ending balance. So we've got all the detail that's taking us from that beginning balance to the ending balance. If I can say that my beginning balance was the same, which is a problem oftentimes with the first bank reconciliation, because we often have that issue with that beginning balance. We started kind of like in the middle or something like that. But if that beginning balance is the same and I can check off all the detail down below, then the ending balance has to be the same with regards to the cleared items. That's going to be the concept with it. You got to convince yourself that it has to work because it does have to work. Now, also note that if you're starting your bank reconciliations kind of like in the middle of the year and you, you probably want to then say, well, how many do I need to, to reconcile or whatnot? You want to usually go back to January. So you want to go back to the beginning of a full year. So just like when we did the beginning or started the new company file, if it's like in the middle of the year or even the end of the year, and you want to enter the data into the system, you would like to have the full year's worth of data into the accounting system, possibly then going back to January. When you have the data into the system and you're starting your bank reconciliations, you'd like to reconcile all the way back to the relevant date, which will be January typically if it's a calendar year, and then reconcile for the entire year. If you have multiple years of data into the system, then and you haven't reconciled them, then at some point in time, you might say, okay, I have to have a cutoff. I'm going to make it correct. I'm going to reconcile as of a particular date, possibly the beginning of the year, like January. And then I'm going to make everything correct from you know that point forward. I'm going to be reconciling, doing the process of reconciling from that point forward. So if you have a full year's worth of data and you've got to get the bank recs from the, the, the bank, then it might be worthwhile to do that. How far back should you go? at least a year probably for the current year that you're going to be working in so that you got a year's worth of reconciled data would be the general the general idea. Now then when we reconcile, we're just going to tick and tie these off because of course the transactions should be exactly the same going from the bank statement to, to our book. So we can just tick and tie, there's the 65, you know, there's the 65, there's the 50, there's the 50 and so on. Note that if we're talking about deposits, then they should clear pretty quickly. But note that the, recon the actual bank statement will always have a date later than or equal to usually later than what is going to be in our system. Because, for example, this deposit 
we put in our system on 1-1, one, one, and it would not have cleared the bank even if electronic transfer until like a day at least, possibly three days, to, to the 1-3. So the dates are always going to be later on the bank statement than they are in our books. That will especially be the case when we're talking about checks. So when we're talking about checks, then we, we could have a longer lag in terms of the date. So when we're looking at the deposits then and checking them off, we, have, we at least have the amount of the deposit, which hopefully will match out to what's on the bank statement. And if they're not matching out, we have to use that undeposited funds a little bit more efficiently. Meaning if I open this up and go back to the home page, you'll recall that we went through undeposited funds when we entered the receive payment and the create sales receipts. If your deposits are not matching in your books to the bank statement, this is where the problem happens. And you're, and you're basically going to have to say, okay, is it because the credit card companies are depositing something differently than what I am doing? Or is it because I have cash transactions that I'm depositing at one time, the bank showing different deposit totals than I have? Then you'd like to fix that in your accounting system so that your deposits will remain the same. And then you could check these off quite easily just with the use of basically the only information you're going to have is the date should be fairly close if it's a deposit and the amount should be the same. So you should be able to tick and tie those off. On the decreases, if you wrote checks, then that's nice because you also have a check number. So the check number is something that's typically going to be on the bank statement and in our books. So I can see, ah, there's the check number. That helps me out too. And we have the amount that should match out. But the date is not going to be as relevant because it's quite likely that the date difference could be a lot more different on the bank statement from on the books. So that's not going to be as useful. However, you might have transactions that are electronic transactions more and more these days. And in that case, you're not going to have a check number, but you, you might have like the name of the vendor, for example, that would be in the memo information. So you get a little bit more information there and the date would be more relevant in that information. If it's an electronic transfer, then it would be kind of more similar to the deposit. It should it should be in a, it should be a date difference of one to three days or like on the same day. So those are the options you might have on the decrease. And then you could have items down below which are on the bank statements, like withdrawals possibly or bank charges that are not in our books. The general idea is going to be if it's on the bank statement and it's not in our books, the bank is probably correct. And we probably have to fix our books to the tie into the bank statement unless there's something on the bank statement that is wrong. If it's on our books, but it's not on the bank statement, then it's probably just a timing issue. The bank's probably not incorrect. The bank just doesn't have the, the information yet, meaning the check or deposit will cl probably clear in the following period. That's the general principle. Therefore, when you're ticking and tying these off, you typically want to be going from the bank statement to your books, right? Going from the bank statement to the books to find everything on the bank statement on the books and everything that in something, if something is on our books and not on the bank statement, we expect that to be the case. Those will be the outstanding items. So we'll talk more about it next time and we'll get into actually checking off the deposit side of things.